Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. We've been talking about depreciation, the different methods, the different concepts, and why we do depreciation. Now it's time to take a look at an example and walk through each of these different ways of calculating depreciation. So here's our example company. This is Jones Co. They purchased a new machine for $1.25 million. At the time, they thought they would be able to use it for about five years and then sell the machine for $150,000. Over the course of those five years, they wanted to produce about 10 million units. You can see here the breakdown of when they think they'll produce each of those 10 million units. We want to start with straight line depreciation. How much would we recognize as depreciation expense each year? The first step to just about every depreciation method is to calculate the depreciation base. And we define that as the historical cost or the amount capitalized. minus the salvage value. So in this case, the historical cost was $1,250,000 and the salvage value is 150000 So the amount we want to depreciate over the five years we intend to own this asset is $1,100,000. Now that I have this number, the other number that I need is my service life. And in this case, it's five years. Now I've got everything I need for straight line depreciation. Remember, with an adjusting entry, we want to include the details as part of the description. So I want my equation not just off to one side, but as part of my journal entry. So let's go ahead and set this up, and we'll slip the calculation in as part of my description. So we're in a debit depreciation expense. I love journal entries. Credit accumulated depreciation. This is an adjusting entry for depreciation. And now let's put in our calculation. So for straight line, that's the depreciation base divided by the number of years in our service life. So our depreciation base we calculated up above. Service life again up above. So each year, I want to depreciate $220,000. So let's put that up here. And now I have not only my depreciation expense calculated, but I got to do a journal entry. Yes. And that's straight line. And you've probably done quite a bit with straight line. Matter of fact, I know we've calculated straight line a couple of times as examples for this class. So hopefully you're comfortable with that one. The next one is our units of production method. And under this method, really, it comes out about the same as what we do with straight line. It's just that instead of using years, we're using units. So there's one extra step. So let's take a look. Depreciation expense under units of production is going to be the depreciation per unit times the number of units produced. So you can think about this as the number of miles that you drive, could be the number of, of pieces that actually come off of my assembly line, etc. So depreciation base or depreciation per unit is going to be our depreciation base divided by our estimated number of units. And then again we'll multiply that by our units produced. So I can calculate this for Jones Company. Let's get our depreciation per unit. That's going to be the $1,100,000 that we calculated as our depreciation base for straight line, same number. And this company assumes that they can produce 10 million units. So 1.1 divided by 10 million is 11 cents per unit. Now we need to multiply by the number of units actually produced. We don't know what they actually produced each year. All we have are the estimates, but that's close enough for what we want to calculate. So here are our years. And here's our units. We're estimating our units produced just so we can see the example. In reality, we'd want to go through and use what we actually made in each year, but this gives us a feel for how much depreciation we'd recognize each year. 
So depreciation, expense. We're going to multiply the units produced by the 11 cents per unit. So this number. So let's see, 1 million times 11 cents is 110,000. 2.5 million times 11 cents is 275. And you can go ahead and keep going, fill out the rest of this table. Here are the numbers. Again, we're just pretending that this is what they actually produced each year up to these 10 million units. Now one thing to remember with units of production is the fact that once I've made the 10 million units I assumed I was going to make, I simply stopped depreciating. I can't go beyond my depreciation base. So we'll talk about changing estimates later. That happens if you get a better estimate. But if you keep thinking, I'm only going to make 10 million, I'm only going to make 10 million, I get to the end of year five and I'm still producing units strong, okay, we just keep making units. I may change my estimates, I may just keep using it, especially if I've depreciated it all the way to zero with no salvage value. So it's up to the company, but just be aware, once you've depreciated the whole depreciation base, you stop. Next method that we want to talk about might be new for you. This is the sum of the years digits method, and I want to just put in a disclaimer right here. Nobody uses this method. It was very popular for a while, but it has gone out of style. Straight line, double decline balance, and units of production are much more common. And I shouldn't say nobody uses it. There's probably a couple companies out there somewhere that use it, but it's just not used very much. But we still talk about it, number one, because it's on the CPA exam. Number two, because you just need to be familiar with all of these different methods so that you can at least propose this option if the question ever comes up. So you probably won't see it much, but just to make sure you're comfortable with how it works, it's a very straightforward method. First we need our depreciation base, which we've already calculated. And we need our service life, so estimated service life. Five years. Now we're going to put those into a table. And I did part of the table for us just to save us a little bit of time. So here it is. There's our years, and there's our depreciation base. We're going to add three more columns to this table so that we can get depreciation expense. The first column we're going to add is the remaining useful life. So at the beginning of year one, how many more years do I think I can use this asset? Well, since it's the beginning of the first year, I think I can use it for five more years. That was my estimate. As I get into year two, now I can use it for four more years, and three more years, two more years, and at the beginning of year five, just one year left. And then I think I'll have to sell it. Since the method is called the sum of the year's digits, my next step here is to sum up the years. So five plus four plus three plus two plus one is 15 years. Now that I've got my 15 years, now I can create my ratio that I'll use to calculate the actual depreciation expense. So we're going to get a sum of the year's digits fraction. And it's not a formal title. It's just the best descriptor I could come up with for it. So what I'm going to do with this fraction is I'm going to take the remaining useful life divided by the total digits. So 5 fifteenths, 4 fifteenths, and so on. And finally, now I can get my depreciation expense. And what I'm going to do is take the depreciation base times the fraction and that's going to give me my depreciation expense. So 1,100,000 times 5 fifteenths is not going to come out pretty, but I'm just going to round to the nearest dollar, 366,667. 1,100,000 times 4 fifteenths is 293,333, and I would go on. Go ahead, take a couple of minutes, finish up this table. Here's our table. Hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with this. It's not a complicated method. It's just not used very much anymore because we've got other methods that people prefer. There are a couple things that people don't like about this method. One of them is the fact, notice how big depreciation expense is up at the front, up at the top, and then it gets smaller over time. So companies don't like to take those big hits in any given year, even though they're probably making more revenue with this asset right at the beginning 
they still don't want to take that big hit. So it lost favor because of the way it depreciates so quickly. The other reason it lost favor is because it doesn't give very nice values. You can see the numbers here don't round out very well. And finally, other methods are just more common. And so companies are, are have switched away from this method just so that their numbers are comparable with their competitors and what their parent companies or what their investors or banks want to see. So that's why this has kind of fallen out of favor. But again, we need to be comfortable with it because it is used occasionally and it is on the CPA exam. Last thing we want to do with this method before we wrap up, two other patterns I want to show. Number one, if you add these up, notice that we come out to that same depreciation base, which is what we want. So that's good. The other thing I want to show you is right here. Notice that in the middle year of the sum of the year's digits method, you get straight line depreciation. And it always works that way. It's a check for yourself to make sure you're doing it right. If there's not an odd number of years, if it's four years, this doesn't work. But if there's an odd number of years, the middle year is always the same as straight line depreciation. So it, it provides a check. The last common method is what we call double declining balance. And this method is generic. It's typically used as double declining balance, but you can do triple declining balance or one and a half declining balance or quadruple declining balance. The rule of depreciation is you just have to have a logical method for allocating these costs to your company and getting them into the income statement. As long as you're consistent, you can do it however you want to. And this is one of those where you have a lot of flexibility. So you can use double declining balance, that's the most common, but 1.75 declining balance, 5 fourths declining balance, I mean you can do it however you want to as long as you're consistent over time. So let's take a look at how double declining balance works. First thing we need to calculate is not the depreciation base. We need to calculate instead what we call the depreciation rate. And to get that we're going to take 1 and divide it by the estimated service life. Then we're going to multiply that by 2. And this is where we can change this method. Double declining balance, I multiply by 2. If it's triple declining balance, I multiply by 3. If it's 1.5 declining balance, 1.5. But this is where you change your ratio so that you can do it however you want to. Is right here. So for our company, depreciation rate, it's 1 out of 5 years. And then we'll multiply that by 2 for double declining. And that's going to give us 40%. And that's going to be our depreciation rate. Now, in order to calculate our depreciation expense each year, what we need is another table. We don't get to do journal entries, just that one, but we do get to do tables, and they're almost as much fun. So let's take a look at the table. We're going to have five columns here. We'll do the year, and then we're going to record our book value or carrying value. And remember, this is our historical cost minus the accumulated depreciation. So that's our book value. Then we'll put in our depreciation rate, which we calculated up here. Then we'll calculate depreciation expense. And our last column is going to be accumulated depreciation. Our first value here is what we paid for the asset. Remember, this is historical cost minus accumulated depreciation. And at the beginning of year one, I haven't done anything with depreciation. So I have my full face value or, or historical cost of the asset. Notice, I'm not using my depreciation base here. This is the only one that we don't start with depreciation base. We're going to use it, we'll see it in a second, but we're not going to use it here. So highlight it, circle it, star it. Another key concept for our discussion is the fact that when you use double declining balance, it's the only time that you do not use depreciation base as a starting point for a depreciation method. So now, our depreciation rate is 40%, and I'm gonna multiply the book value times the depreciation rate to give me depreciation expense. So 1,250,000 times 40% is 500,000. If I recognize 500,000 for depreciation expense, then my accumulated depreciation is 500,000. Zero plus 500,000, 500,000. In year two, I have a new book value now. Historical cost is still 1.25 million, but now accumulated depreciation is 500,000. So that's 750,000 now is my book value. 40%, 750,000 
750 times 40 percent gives us 300,000 is depreciation expense and now I have accumulated depreciation of 800,000 now we have three more years here go ahead and finish this table so that you have the depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation for each year how does your table look does it match up I hope as you went through and did this you noticed there's a problem here with this very last accumulated depreciation balance. If I take 1,088,000 plus 64,800, I'm not going to end up with my depreciation base. Instead, I'm going to be much higher than the depreciation base. And that leads us to the last part of the double declining balance method, and that is you have to make sure that this accumulated depreciation is less than or equal to the depreciation base. So I'm not going to use depreciation base in my calculations, I'm just going to use it as a check figure. Do I go higher than depreciation base? If I do, i got to stop, because I can't depreciate more than that depreciation base. So when I get to this last year, I'm going to look at these numbers and realize, wait a minute, if I do a full 64800 of depreciation expense here in year 5, I'll be way over what I need. All I really need is 12000 and that's what I'm going to use for my depreciation expense so that I end up with 1,100,000 as my total accumulated depreciation. Now there are times using double declining balance that you will end up in year four all done with depreciation. You've maxed out, your full depreciation expense is done and you've still got five more years, four more years, three more years, whatever it is. That's okay. That's how this method works. So you record depreciation expense using that 40% until you get to your depreciation base and then you stop. And then you just keep using the asset and then you sell it off for whatever that salvage value is or you make an adjustment with a change in estimate. So those are depreciation methods. Hopefully you're comfortable with these basics of the methods. When we come back we're going to start talking about another little twist that we can throw into depreciation which is what happens if we don't buy the asset at the beginning of the year? What if we buy it partway through the year? Well, then things change just a bit. And with that preview of coming attractions, I'll see you next time.